Hi everyone, welcome to lecture number 18 from actuarialpath.com. In this lecture, we will talk about negative binomial distribution. If you recall, lecture number 16 was about binomial distribution. Lecture number 17 was about geometric distribution. And this lecture is going to be about negative binomial distribution. Negative binomial distribution is related to geometric distribution as well as binomial distribution. If you recall binomial distribution, it counts the number of successes in n independent and identical Bernoulli trials. The number of trials is fixed. For negative binomial distribution, you again have independent and identical Bernoulli trials with a constant probability of success on each trial, which doesn't change from trial to trial. But the number of trials is not fixed. What is fixed is the number of successes. So what you're trying to answer is, given that you must have, let's say, R number of successes, how many independent and identical Bernoulli trials do you need? That's what negative binomial distribution is trying to answer. The random variable x, which counts the number of independent and identical Bernoulli trials, needed to observe the first R successes. Okay. So let's say the probability of success is constant, which is P from trial to trial and it doesn't change from one trial to another trial and the trials are also independent. Let's consider a simple example which is you toss a coin sequentially until the first two heads are observed. I'm going to consider heads as a success. Okay? And x is that random variable, the number of trials, or in this case, the number of coin tosses needed for the first two successes. So here, r equals to 2. So the values of x could be the following. The smallest value of x you can observe is 2 because that happens if you observe two successes in a row or heads and heads. If you observe that event, then x is equal to 2 because you don't need to toss the coin again because you already have two heads that you need. x could also take a value of 3 and that happens with the following event, you could have failure, tails, heads, heads, or heads, tails, heads, will also give you two successes. x could be equal to 4 if x is 4 if, if you have tails first, Tails next, heads, heads. Also, we could have tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. Those events also give you x equals 4 because you need 4 trials to observe your first 2 successes. What you observe from here 
is that the last event is always going to be the success event. Okay, so the last event is always the success, but the previous x minus 1, in this case x minus 1 is just 1. The previous x minus 1 events should have r minus 1 which is 1 success. The previous x minus 1 events, which in this case is 2 events, should have 1 success. Again here, the previous x minus 1 previous three in this case because x is four events should have one success heads heads and heads so you see that pattern that gives us an idea of how we could write the PMF of a negative binomial distribution so if x is defined as the number of independent and identical Bernoulli trials needed for the first R successes then if you look at the probability that x is equal to little x, what you're trying to do is for you to have x trials resulting in r success, you must have had the first x minus 1 trials with r minus 1 successes. Okay, let me write that down. For random variable x to be equal to little x, the first x minus 1 trials must have had r minus 1 successes, followed by the last one, which is a success. So the number of ways you could have x minus 1 trials with r minus 1 successes is x minus 1 choose r minus 1 of which probability of success is p so r minus 1 are a success and the rest which is x minus 1 minus r minus 1 are failures happening with the probability of 1 minus p and the last one is a success so I need to multiply this by p out. If you simplify that, we get x minus 1 choose r minus 1 times p to the power of r, r minus 1, power of 1 here, times 1 minus p to the power of x minus r. And x could take values equal to r, r plus 1, r plus 2, and so on. And that is the negative binomial PMF the PMF of a negative binomial distribution is given by that. For the rest of this lecture, we're going to find out the expectation, the variance, and the MGF of a negative binomial distribution. In fact, the expectation of x is going to be equal to r divided by p. Variance of x is going to be equal to r times 1 minus p divided by p squared. And the MGF of x is going to be equal to e, p times e to the power of t divided by 1 minus 1 minus p times e to the power of t, the whole thing, to the power of r. And if you don't care how we derive the expectation, the variance, and the MGF, you can stop watching this video. But then I highly recommend you to watch this because it's going to be very helpful. So we have a lot of tricks in it that will become useful when you when you do your exam. So here x follows a negative binomial distribution with parameters r and p. Okay. One thing you can notice here is that the expectation, the variance, and the MGF of a negative binomial distribution. It's very similar to, to that of a geometric distribution. Let's say y follows a geometric distribution. Geometric distribution has one parameter, which is p, the probability of success. And its expectation 
expectation of y is 1 over p. And the variance of y is 1 minus p divided by p square. And the MGF of y is p times e to the t divided by 1 minus 1 minus p times e to the t. So therefore, what you can see is if y follows a negative binomial, I'm sorry, if y follows a geometric p, and I could write it as a negative binomial distribution with r equals to 1 and p. Okay. So a geometric distribution with parameter p is the same as a negative binomial distribution with parameter r equals 1 and p equals the p here. The reason is the following. Negative binomial distribution counts the number of trials needed for the first r successes. But geometric distribution simply counts the number of trials needed for the first success. So that means when you have r equals 1, you're thinking of finding the number of trials needed for the first success instead of the number of trials needed for the first r successes. r could be 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. That's why a negative binomial distribution is a general form of geometric distribution, or a geometric distribution is a special form of negative binomial distribution. Now, let's go ahead and see if the negative binomial PMF sums to 1. A valid PMF must sum to 1. So if this is a valid PMF, I should have that the summation x equals r to infinity of the PMF should be equal to 1. So that's the first thing I want to show. Okay. So let's look at that summation. Sum x equals 1, x equals r to infinity of x minus 1, choose r minus 1, times p to the power of r, 1 minus p to the power of x minus r. Okay, so p to the power of r does not depend on x. So it's a constant which can be taken outside of the summation times the sum x equals r to infinity of x minus 1 choose r minus 1 times 1 minus p to the power of x minus r. Now this summation starts from r, but I would like it to start from 0. So what I want to do is let k be equal to x minus r. So this implies that x is equal to k plus r. And when x is equal to r, r minus r is 0. So k is equal to 0. So when x equals to infinity, also k is infinity. So this summation can be written as p to the power of r times the summation k equals 0 to infinity of, instead of x, I'm going to put k plus r, k plus r minus 1, choose r minus 1 times 1 minus p to the power of, instead of x, again I put k plus r minus r, which is k. Alright, so this is just simply k. I'm going to erase that. Okay. If you look at this series, it is a negative binomial series. A negative binomial series is the following. Let me use a different color. 1 minus, let's say, y to the power of negative r is equal to the sum k equals 0 to infinity k plus r minus 1 choose r minus 1 times y to the power of k. 
So if y is less than 1, the series converges to 1 minus y to the power of negative r. The series converges to 1 minus y to the power of negative r. Here, the only difference here is that I have 1 minus p instead of y. So I can rewrite this as 1 minus 1 minus p to the power of negative r. But 1 minus 1 minus p is equal to p. So I have p to the power of r times p to the power of negative r, which is equal to 1. And therefore, the PDF sums to 1. OK, let me split this lesson into two. It's already 15 minutes. And uh, in the next lesson, or in the second part of this lesson, uh, we will derive the expectation, the variance, and the MGF of negative binomial distribution. Okay.